<clears throat> Thank you, Brother Jeremy. You know, as he was talking tonight, I kept my, my mind kept going back to the Pharisee and the day of Jesus that he dealt with. These were the people that Jesus was the hardest on, the Pharisees. They were religious people, but they actually really were no different than those whom they were judging, really, in heart. They were those who rejoiced in the outward appearance of things, long flowing robes to make their faces to be as if they were tormented in their fasting and they were delighting in appearance, which is what a hypocrite does. Not only that, but they were harsh in their judgments. There were people that were seeking to enter the kingdom of God who were heavy laden and burdened, like that woman who was cast before Jesus at his feet. There was some measure of tenderness in her because Jesus, because of the way Jesus treated her, we know that that's the case, and yet look at how they, they were contemptuous with her and harsh. And they laid heavy burdens on men's backs and would not lift them even with their finger. Now that's the kind of person that we're dealing with in Romans chapter 2. Now, as you know, Romans, the, the argument of Romans is the reason why they were this way is because they needed a righteousness from God. And so that brings us back to the critical need that we all have. They didn't have any less need than the Gentile world did. They all needed righteousness. Amen. And uh, so let me begin at least by saying, well, this will be an exhortation to, to protect ourselves from hypocrisy, because all of us have the seeds of this kind of thing in us. We can all become, so to speak, a modern day Pharisee and a hypocrite if we're not careful. Let me begin this way. Jeremy had said, uh, remember he talked about the woman that was caught in the act of adultery and Jesus charged her, go and sin no more. And I appreciated that he reminded us what we've reminded one another of continually while we're here is that Jesus will never tell us to do something that he'll not empower us to do. So let me just appeal to your faith from this perspective. In a lot of different places in the scripture, we find an affirmation that everything that we really need to do, what God has told us to do is really is found in Christ Jesus. Those resources are found there. Jesus told his disciples, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. See, he's not a vine, he's the vine. He's not one of many vines, he's the vine. See? And this is a true vine, one that truly does minister the nourishment and the strength that, that, that we need to bear the fruit that God requires of us. Well, that's a good way of looking at this fruit. What it is, is we're able to do what God exhorts us to do. Another way of seeing it, Colossians, Paul told the brethren there, he says, all the fullness of the Godhead dwells in him bodily, and ye are complete in him. See? Everything that God has to give us as far as resources are concerned, he's actually deposited in his son, Jesus Christ. It's a wealth of resources. Think of Jesus as an environment or an atmosphere. He's put you in a place. It's like, it's, I probably shouldn't use the word warehouse, but all the resources that God has, he's put in Christ Jesus, and he's put you in Christ Jesus. God is faithful. God is faithful <laughs> by whom you yourselves, brethren, have been deposited in Christ Jesus, where all those resources are had. So it's just a matter of availing yourselves of it. Paul told the Philippians this way. He said that he's given us everything we need, everything we my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So think any, anything that you need, God has a plethora of those resources to provide for you. His grace is manifold. His love can be shed abroad in your heart. See, think of, think of the resources of God in those kinds of terms. If you've ever been in a place where there's something that you needed, but there was just like a minute bit of it. I mean, there wasn't hardly anything like... Like, well, our brethren who, who were traversing in times of famine, Abraham and those others we talked about, they, they needed resources, but there weren't a lot of resources where they were at. Well, that is not the way it is in Christ Jesus. Think of the riches, the rich supply, that when you think of what God has asked of you, and it seems like a lot, just be reminded of the rich supply that God has given us in Christ Jesus to carry out what God has asked us to do. Or Peter would say it this way, he's given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Now, I think living a life free from hypocrisy falls under the category of life and godliness. So here's my exhortation to you. I actually want to give it from back to you at Malachi 
chapter 6, verse 8, when we're thinking about hypocrisy, when we're thinking about being judgmental of others when we, when we can be doing the very same things, I think this is a fitting word for us. He has showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. You know, Brother Jeremy continually uh, encouraged us tonight with this fact that we need a Savior. And so let's be encouraged this way. I want th one thing that will encourage our humility will be to continually be reminded of where we were when Jesus saved us. And you'll find this throughout the scriptures. It's mentioned over and over. Ephesians chapter 2, he says, you that were dead in trespasses and sins, hath he quickened together with him. There's, a, there's one place right there. In another place of scripture in Ephesians chapter 4, when he is encouraging us to not be harsh toward our brethren, which you know is one of your tendencies, you know you can actually find yourself harder on your brethren than you are on yourself. If you want to be hard on somebody, be hard on you. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, he says, Be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Amen. See, so hearkening back, <laughs> hearkening back to where you were. It's good for us, brethren, when we speak about man to do so according to what God has revealed about man. There's none righteous. No, not one. The righteousness that we have, we have obtained from him. We were dead in trespasses and sin. There was a time, as, as, as Paul wrote to Titus, that we were living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared, not by work of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his own mercies. See, brethren, we are a product of the mercy of God. The last thing the people of God should be are a merciless, harsh people. Because God has displayed abundant mercy to us. So, brethren, that's one thing you don't want to forget or to despise. He goes on in this, in this text in Romans to say the reason why they're in this condition is because they're despising the goodness of God and the forbearance of God. It is of the mercies of the Lord, brethren, that we are not consumed. Amen. And so the last thing that a person who knows that their life is the product of God's great mercy and his goodness is going to do is to be a hypocrite and be harsh mm -hmm. toward people. So let's be encouraged to think about these things and, and to walk humbly before our God, knowing, brethren, we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ too. This doesn't mean not to judge. This doesn't mean to do that. Mm -hmm. It means realizing that you're going to be judged according to the measure that you judge, mm -hmm. which is a righteous judgment. So if we're going to render a judgment, let it be a righteous one. We open it up for your comments tonight, brethren.